The K-type airship served with distinction during World War II. Although the design dated to 1935 and only 134 were built, the K-ships escorted convoys, fought off submarines, and performed rescues in many wartime theaters. The K-88, for example, was nicknamed 88 Keys while hunting for Nazi U-boats off Brazil. K-47 served off Eureka, California, searching for Japanese I-class submarines and performing search and rescue as part of Airship Squadron ZP-32. After the war, many K-ships, including the 47, wound up in Lakehurst, New Jersey, flying in the reserves. The Korean conflict renewed interest in anti-submarine warfare. Several dozen K-ships were modernized into the ZP-2K configuration. Improvements included reversing propellers, a winch to recover water ballast, and underway refueling facilities. Some missions were conducted from escort carriers, and their armament now included the formidable homing torpedo. By the mid-1950s, the airships were again upgraded. The mechanics panel was incorporated for the pilots, and the machine gunner was replaced by a sonar man. A bubble window was added aft. The ZP-3K modifications included improved electrical capacity, modernized electronics, and a redesigned stern with winch to support a deep-diving towed sonar fish. The Navy redesignated the 3K as ZSG-3. Finally, an entirely new construction, the ZSG-4, was designed and built with all the lessons learned. The ZSG-4 resembled the older airships as they all trained to find and defeat Russian submarines. By the late 1950s, the Navy decided not to upgrade airships to counter nuclear submarines. The K-types flew with the reserves until most were scrapped, saving the four that were sacrificed to atomic testing. A VHS cameraman accompanied Commander Charles Mills, retired Navy airship pilot, to the New Jersey salvage yard where he showed another friend the remains of surplus K-ship cars. Uh, 24. He did crop dusting after the war. Uh -huh. and then he started collecting junk. And he never sold a thing. And then he kept, kept coming over to see me the whole time I was building the helistat wanted me to put one of these together for him. He was going to sell everything for a million dollars. I said, well, it's not quite enough because it's going to cost you just exactly 750000 for a new envelope. And it'll cost you about a half a million to put that thing back together. The knees have got that blister. I guess that was for that modification. That's a mod, yeah, for, for looking out the back. Originally, there was just a door on the port side. Commander Mills is heard revealing his 1962 subterfuge, withholding airship parts from the crusher. I hid all my crap in the false wall in the wooden hangars. Before I left, I stored a complete airship in there. That's how we built the helistat. Uh-huh. And every piece to make one complete machine. One of the cars was selected for the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. Other cars were sold to a collector in Florida. What is believed to be the only ZSG-4 broke apart when trying to pull it out of the mud. The remaining ZP-3K cars were later purchased by collector Kermit Weeks. These reside in Florida. The bow section of the 4K car was saved and was eventually donated to the Moffett Field Historical Society. Commander Mills points out the 2K cars he has selected for the National Museum of Naval Aviation. I picked these two. This was the best one. But this is this is the pair that I had chosen to make one out of. And looks to match up their detached pieces. Oh, yeah. Okay, left and the right over there. We need a two pair. That's a matched pair. Because you got the bottom shackle on the, on the underside of the port and the under, underside of the starboard. The bottom is uh, the smooth metal that goes around and then a landing gear. I don't see a landing gear on any one of them. We should specify if he's got one landing gear at all, we want it. Two cars and assorted parts were shipped to Pensacola, Florida. A restoration team used some parts from the ZSG-388 in the process of restoring the ZSG-347. The remains of 88 were taken to the United Kingdom but it has not been practical to proceed any further. 
After thousands of volunteer hours, the restoration includes period anti-submarine electronics, personal equipment, clothing, and even vintage meal packing. K-47 was visited by former members of her World War II and Cold War crews during the Naval Airship Association reunion. Fully restored ZP-3 K-47 is today proudly displayed in the National Museum of Naval Aviation. ZP-3 K-47 remains the only complete Cold War anti-submarine airship restored and displayed anywhere in the world.